there are just a few thousand. He thought, gee, you can't have such a small number of fibers going to so many nerve cells and reach them all. And so he concluded that many of the nerve cells inside the gut received no connection at all from the central nervous system. So he classified the nervous system, this large set of neurons that Auerbach had found as an independent nervous system, the enteric division. So he had three divisions, Langley, sympathetic, parasympathetic, and enteric. So Langley at the time was the um, editor of the Journal of Physiology, which dominated the field of physiology at the turn of the century, the early 20th century. It's still a very good journal. And he actually owned it. Um, and he edited it and was an imperious editor. So period, people would actually get, see the, send in a manuscript and see it print and find that Langley had edited it and hadn't even deigned to let them know that he'd made changes in their papers. Anyway, he, after he died, perhaps because people didn't like him, his uh, classification was sort of changed not officially, or even anyone thought about it. They just simply referred to the sympathetic and parasympathetic and dropped the detail of the enteric nervous system. So years later, when I got going on it, I got all excited. It was an independent nervous system, and I could look at it, and I thought I'd made some important discoveries, and then I discovered it. All these old guys had done everything before me. So... My great contribution, if there is one, is rediscovering what my betters had already discovered. I want to talk about some of the troubles that people have, like heartburn and ulcers and what you write about and what you've learned in the last 12, 13 years since the book was published. How can I help? Let's talk about heartburn. Why do so many people have it? Yes. Okay, God got angry. But you want a simpler answer than that. <laughs> Nothing more scientific. <laughs> well, I'd like to know what is happening and does the gut have anything to do with heartburn? Yes, of course. So the sensation of heartburn comes about when acid goes from the stomach up into the esophagus. So the lining of the esophagus is meant to conduct f food from your mouth to your stomach. So when you eat a bite of something or other, a uh, pizza or a roll or whatever it is you're eating, a steak, you, you don't digest it very much in your mouth. and You just chew it up, and some of us do that poorly, others a little better, but, you know, food is pretty rough when it gets down. You put it in the back of your mouth, and your swallowing reflex starts it down the esophagus. So the esophagus has a lining that's specialized to resist being abraded away, by the rough food that we put down it. And it doesn't digest very much, so it's a tough epithelium. But it's not specialized to resist acid. That you find in the stomach. So the junction between the esophagus and the stomach is highly modified to keep the acid that the stomach makes in the stomach and not let it get into the esophagus. When it does get into the esophagus, uh, it burns and it hurts like hell. So the trick is you've got to keep it in the stomach. So there's a sphincter. A sphincter is like a valve. It lets things go into the stomach and is not supposed to let stuff go up the other way. But when you get old, it can fail. And sometimes it fails even when you're not old, and some acid sneaks up. And so you've got your own sort of Tums that is special glands that make alkali. But if you put a lot of acid up, it just sneaks up in there and burns the esophagus. And, and that's real bad because, first of all, it hurts. And we don't like the sensation of heartburn, which is what happens when acid is burning your esophagus. Uh, it feels the way you'd think it would feel. Uh, secondly, 
it's not good because it can damage the esophagus. And it can, if it's not really changed, it can lead to a condition called Barrett's esophagus uh, and then cancer. And cancer of the esophagus is no joke. It's a terrible condition. So it's very good to stop GERD or gastroesophageal reflex if you can. And how is it stopped? The cheapest and easiest way is turn off the acid. And one way to do that is take Tums or uh, Jelucil or Maalox, and that neutralizes the acid. But that doesn't last very long. A second approach is to try to paralyze the cells that make acid. And one approach is to turn off the ignition on those cells. So there are two switches, three actually, to ignite them. One is triggered by one switch. The key has uh, the molecule acetylcholine. Another has a molecule called gastrin. And the third switch is uh, a molecule called histamine. And so if you take an antagonist that blocks the action of one of the keys, that helps. So um, Tagamet and Zantax are antihistamines. Um, you don't want to mess with the acetylcholine key because if you take enough that blocks that, it blocks too much all over the body. The other way you can do it, which is even more effective, is to block the acid pump. Just take a drug that turns the pump completely off. So don't mess with the keys, the ignition. Just take out the motor. Um, and then you can't make any acid. And uh, Prilosec is the prototypic drug that does that. It's now available over the counter. So you can stop the acid. So for many, many people, that works fine. But if it doesn't, it gets tougher. And ultimately, um, you can try to improve the motility of the gut and the sphincter action with some drugs. And if that doesn't work, you go to surgery. Is it true that as we get older, that many people don't make enough hydrochloric acid in the stomach? Not many, but some. That's called achlorhydria, and... That's not a good thing either because that often is a prelude to stomach cancer. And it's sometimes seen in people with pernicious anemia. Um, so those are, that's not a great thing. And it's not common, but it happens. You say that digestion starts in the mouth. You do have some digestive enzymes that can uh, begin the digestion of starch complex things like that, and breaking it down into simple sugars, uh, which can be absorbed. But stomach acid turns those enzymes right off, so they don't do very much. Mostly, you just lubricate the food, chew it up, and get it to slide down the esophagus. And real digestion begins in the stomach. And the major event, the bulk of it, goes on in the small intestine beyond the stomach. Why is it so important that your rediscovery of the second brain being in the gut, why is it so important now? And why was it in 1998 when you published the book? What is the essence of why that discovery is so important in terms of its impact? Well, you can't take an intelligent approach to helping anybody with a gut problem if you don't know how to control it. I mean, if you, if you think it's all in the head and everything you do is to treat the brain when the problem could be in the gut, you're lost. So it's very important always to know how every organ actually is run. And particularly when you have an organ such as the gut that can run itself, clearly you're going nowhere unless you know how to run it, how it runs, how it does that. But there's another reason as important as that is, and that is you do have an in a nervous system in the gut, and yes, it runs the gut, uh, but when it runs the gut normally, even though it can run the gut independently of any input from brain or spinal cord, it doesn't 